Joe Stain provides some details about Halo Infinite's development. New Halo Infinite trailer has been released. Is the green wall back in Halo? And progression is the biggest point of discussion within the Halo community. That and a whole lot more we're talking about today, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Welcome to another episode of Last Week in Halo. This is a weekly show I like to put up on my channel where we talk about all the things that happened in the last week of Halo because I know everyone can't keep up with the news as soon as it happens. So this is like your one-stop shop every Monday morning to talk about everything that happened in the past week of Halo so you get all caught up. We do live stream these videos every Monday morning as well. So if you guys want to take part in the discussion, ask me some questions in chat, make sure you subscribe to know when those videos go live. So we have a ton of different topics to talk about today. Timestamps in the description of this video as well. You want hop to exactly where you need to go. So without further ado, let's jump right into the details here. So to start off the news week, guys, we had IGN do an interview with Joseph Staden. It was a rather insightful interview. The first half was mainly about just a kind of Joseph Staden and his other hobbies outside of Halo. But the second half of this interview did provide some interesting details, which we did talk about on this channel as well. Some interesting aspects of like how Halo 2 was supposed to end and what Joseph Staden has done personally to help change the development course of Halo Infinite. You can pretty much thank him for the delay. I do have a video on my channel detailing everything in this interview if you want to check that out, but just know that Joseph Stain is our guy and it looks like he's going to be sticking around for Halo for quite some time. But that's not the only interview Joseph Stain provided as he has a nice little quick 117 rapid fire question answer session with Game Informer and here's a little bit of a snippet. It's kind of a fun little watch. Have you found any skulls mm. on your own? Yes, I've only found one. How hard is it going to be to find skulls on the Zeta Halo? Certainly more challenging than in past Halo games, and that's mainly because there's just more territory to explore. Now here on the competitive Halo subreddit, an interesting post was made about the accuracy differences between mouse and keyboard and controller. And you can see there's a, certainly a bit of a trend. We did make a video talking about this previously as well. If you want to check out that video as well, more details provided in there. But you can generally see with equally skilled players playing against each other, controllers seem to have an overall advantage when it comes to the accuracy. Now, this could maybe just because Halo is kind of fundamentally a controller style game. I mean, they mentioned that they didn't want to mess with like the core aspects of Halo, which have been fundamentally developed from the ground up to be feeling really good on controller. This is our first game to have a co-launch on PC. And you can see how with evenly skilled players, that the controller seems to have a bit of an advantage. Though a really high skilled keyboard and mouse player compared to like a middle of the road kind of controller player, that keyboard and mouse player does do better. This has been an ongoing discussion within the Halo community since MCC's launch on PC. And I think it's kind of the main reason why we have that division right within the rank settings of having only controller, only mouse and keyboard, and mixed in three different playlists. This is definitely going to be an ongoing discussion about Halo Infinite and balance between input devices. If we get some more information from 343 and the response about it, I'll definitely let you guys know on this channel. Xbox also recently just released two different trailers for Halo Infinite over the weekend and they're pretty cool live action stuff. The first one called Forever We Fight. This trailer just to kind of showcases how like, over the course of mankind we've always had to defend our right for existence anyway. There's always some big baddie out there in the darkness trying to hunt us down and it's still the same back in the olden days, the current modern days as well as what will happen in the future against the banished in lore of Halo obviously. And it's a really kind of awesome heroic trailer which really does help kind of give you that sense of heroism throughout humanity's existence that there's always going to be those people who are going to step up and do what's right to fight for humanity and all that kind of good stuff like our good boy the master chief which the second trailer which is shorter and a bit of a different edit i think more people are going to like though because the second trailer is a super sweet live action or either really well done cgi trailer showcasing master chief slapping around some brutes and you even get to see one of the bosses will fight in the game here so Varus kicking our boy master chief down but not out for long and you get to see that this is just an absolutely amazing live action trailer the stuff that we've been waiting for honestly for so long and now it's coming about two weeks before the launch is awesome this really is actually kind of interesting as well comes with a become master chief thing which kind of puts you in this trailer with a really cool facial recognition kind of deep fake kind of thing fellow content creator halo cannon posted it up on his channel i would have done it myself 
but every time I've tried doing it with my Android phone or on PC, I've been getting nothing but error messages. So, you know, might be having some issues with you guys on that one. But if you guys can check out the link in the description down below to check out the Become Master Chief Promotion website. See if you can get it working for yourself. Maybe get some tips on how to make it work for me because I really want to do this because it looks so freaking cool. And just like last weekend, this weekend we had a bunch of competitive tournaments happen for Halo. This one being more international, I think we had Australia, we also had Mexico, and then we also had the US based teams all kind of competing together to get some more qualifying positions. And uh, this one's kind of interesting where like last week, Optic won for the North America side of things. And guess what? Optic did it again with back-to-back -back weekend qualifier championship level positioning here, which is really interesting. Again, also against Cloud9, which is very interesting here. Because does this mean that the green wall is back in Halo? This is definitely going to be a team to take note of when that Raleigh event happens in mid-December, guys. I'll keep you updated when anything goes on there. Also, some pro players are discussing the Mangler over Twitter here. The Mangler is a very interesting weapon as it's a one-shot melee for a kill. A three-shot kill as well, but it's uh, kind of interesting within its role within Halo Infinite. And the reason why I bring this up because if a lot of Halo pros don't really seem to like where the Mangler is sitting right now, they don't quite know exactly as a whole about how to fix it up or anything like that, but there's some definitely some interesting discussions like, def like Trippy here who's a part of that Optic team that won last two weeks and saying definitely a two-shot shot beat down in his opinion the one shot beat down is just absurd but it seems like a majority of the pros for the consensus say that something needs to change about this so i just want to keep an eye on this for you guys because honestly if enough pros bring up enough discussion about the mangler we could potentially see a change or a nerf or some capacity to that weapon obviously 343 has the data and also, also they you know 343 could probably make specific competitive settings for just the mangler alone since it's going to be a very particular playlist but if a conversation about the mangler starts rising about it being a little overpowered and needing a nerf between the competitive and also social communities as well, we could see that weapon changing down the line. Again, it's a developing story, but I'll let you guys know as soon as anything concrete happens. Also talking more about competitive Halo guys, the Doc, yes, Dr. Disrespect seems to put a little bit of interest into it. Saying here on Twitter, I'm going to learn Forge so all the Halo pros, organizations, and leagues hit me up for world champion caliber map design. Buckle in. So now you're probably thinking, oh God, a content creator is trying to change the game for whatever he likes. But keep in mind, Dr. Disrespect actually has created maps, like actual maps within the Call of Duty community. I believe he was mainly involved with like the 2v2 and 3v3 maps on there. He also was legitimately on the development team for Advanced Warfare as well. So the guy knows a little bit of what he's talking about when it comes to map design and also just how development of the whole process works. Obviously, I think it looks like he's going to be continuing to be a streamer, but we've definitely seen Forge maps in the past be implemented into competitive Halo. It's honestly just a matter of time once it actually does happen for Halo Infinite. If you hear anything more about this, well, I'll definitely let you guys know on this channel. And then we're at the point where we're talking about the Halo Infinite news. And most of the discussion about Halo Infinite, as you probably could assume, is about the progression system. Now we did see an update to the progression and XP dealings during the initial week of Halo Infinite, though the second week was kind of quiet. Obviously Thanksgiving weekend, people traveling for their families. Community director Sketch responded about this on Twitter saying been traveling so slow to respond, but please know the constructive feedback is being heard loud and clear. Changes will take time and our priority this week is giving the team a much deserved break for the holiday after a long final stretch. Thank you for understanding. And 343 has stated as well that with the push even further for season two and season three coming more in the later half of 2022, that it will provide the development team more time to make the changes necessary for the progression system. This is clearly a high priority for the team and we're gonna see changes, but it's just gonna have to take some time. Enough changes before launch, I doubt, but the community has been loud and clear and I'll show you why. Like posting this clip from the multiplayer overview and it kind of puts a different context to what we saw in the video. The body of customization content that we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization 
innovation combinations for Spartans on the battlefield. Coatings offer us a unique opportunity to craft some hyper-polished looks and let you express yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. So we're coming at this from a player-first mentality. All of these rewards are single source, so you're never going to be confused about where things come from. If you can unlock something in the battle pass, we're not going to let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game. I would say my opinion on this one is that like they're not necessarily lying to you, but it just kind of gave players the wrong impression that it seemed like day one, we're gonna have all these different options for customization. You don't have to pay a whole lot of money only if you want to, but it seems like a lot of the really cool stuff or the stuff that really is just kind of more additional content rather than feeling like something special you get at a store is tied to the store or to the battle pass as well. Especially saying that there's like millions of different combinations. I mean like mathematically probably, but functionally and the way it feels, it's just not quite there. And kind of echoing that sentiment, this post on Reddit, which has almost 34,000 and upvotes and a 91% upvote you can see how in these images that like the default coding is on the left and also on the right is level 99 in the battle pass. And the only thing that really changes is like the blue stuff. So like technically, yes, it's new customization, but it certainly doesn't feel like new customization. Even here on the bottom part as well with the unlocked armor coding that is just blue, level 14 for like the Carter kit, it just changes the lights to like blue as well. Not exactly overwhelming customization. And notable journalist Tom Warren, who's a senior editor at The Verge, talks about how it looks like he's going to have to give Infinite a bit of a break just because of some of the pains that he's having when it comes to the cosmetic situation, the progression, nade spam, and lack of dedicated playlists have just been kind of really been the biggest talk of discussion when it comes to Halo Infinite. We also had this poor, poor Reddit user who said, after 36 hours of playing the game, I finally unlocked the golden visor. Pride and accomplishment there. Not knowing that this was actually given out to everybody. Top comments being, is someone going to tell him? Say, no, let him have his glory. Then the original poster saying, what? Then people going like, I can't tell him. I can't tell him. I don't want to ruin this. Eventually, someone says that they were given away for free because they had the reset of the challenges. And he says, you gotta be shitting me. <laughs> so again, I'm just like, it's, we got like the wrong impression, I feel, when it came to just the progression and what kind of customer but we're going to have like day one first time playing the multiplayer yes it's still the beta right now but this is all the day one content that they said in the blog post all the maps modes customization is there this is effectively the launch that we had on november 15th obviously the official launch is on december 8th but i don't really expect much to change besides just saying it's not a beta anymore talking about things to unlock and do within halo infinite we had our first event the fractured tenrai event and it seemed to be kind of a limp in kind of event with 16 out of the 30 tiers being xp grants and challenge swaps not exactly a rewarding experience you have left and right shoulders that are separated five tiers away from each other so you can only unlock one at a time for the different weeks that will be out. You can only max out at level seven. But what makes it even more frustrating is that we see like these really cool armor you can buy in the store right away and look like a samurai in a way, which is kind of disappointing. When we had this Yoroi armor set advertised to us, that's like, yes, you can unlock this armor, which wasn't even part of the battle pass or even part of the like, event or anything like that. So we might just have to wait a bit later for it to come in, like in the later weeks or something like that, probably part of the store, which just doesn't feel right. It just feels like it was a bit misleading again. And just so you all know that Fiesta event that we're having right now will end on November 30th on Tuesday, guys. So get your Fiesta challenges done as soon as you can because it won't be back until January, 2022. And a recent Reddit leak showcased some of the battle passes for the other events coming for us guys for the Winter Contingency event, Cyber Showdown, as well as Tactical Ops. And these battle passes, I can't really show you guys because of obviously leaked content. I don't want to risk losing my channel over just like some pictures. But for the most part, there is kind of a similar theme of like a coding here or there, a new stance or something like that. Not like a whole lot of new stuff. Obviously, these could just be battle passes that we don't have the full picture yet of them. I mean, I would expect to have some more armor customization, but not a whole lot there, to be honest. So a very interesting thing showcased with the tactical ops there was a nameplate saying lone wolf on there which lone wolves was the original name of free for all within halo so we could see free for all come back with tactical ops maybe sometime in january with winter contingency most likely being in december because it's very holiday themed in cyber showdown probably also in january as well each one of these events providing their own battle passes most likely free but also probably has some tied paid content within the store as well 
Once those events drop, I will let you guys know on this channel for sure though. And we do have a full video detailing it, the whole thing as well, if you guys want some more details about that as well. But this is kind of a video more just kind of summarizing everything that happened in the last week. So overall guys, a lot of discussion about progression and unlocks within Halo Infinite. I think universally people are agreeing that the gameplay of Halo Infinite is absolutely amazing. It's one of my favorite games of Halo I've ever played multiplayer wise, at least with like the core gameplay experience of it. It's incredibly addictive and I'm absolutely loving it. And also, especially with the competitive settings, might be the best competitive launch settings we've ever had in a Halo game. And it's very fun to play. But the issue is that the carrot at the end of the stick for a lot of people that they really like when it comes to their games is not exactly there or not exactly or the proper impression was given when it comes to the customization and progression within Halo Infinite. Obviously, the story is going to be developing. 343 will be changing things in the future. It's just going to take some time and I will cover on this channel, guys, as soon as we get some more information on it. But if you're new to the channel or missed any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. Got a link to all my Halo Infinite news informational videos we've been uploading daily about. So thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.